plan on come back. Okay, okay. It must be a real big change. Well, let, but let's talk about your you know diving profession and underwater photography because that's something that's close to your heart. How, how long have you? How many years? When did you first start diving? Uh, my first dive was in 1948. Right. And um, I live in Santa Barbara, California. I was raised there. And so most of my diving was in that particular area in the 40s and 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm one of those photographers that came from a photographic family. Okay. My grandmother was a portrait photographer. My uncle was a landscape photographer. And my father was a flower photographer in South America. All right. So what's left is the ocean. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and I chose black and white, and I'm glad that I stayed with that. Oh, it's, why did you choose black and white? It's timeless. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a timeless venue, and uh, today it's very, very popular, and uh, a lot of collectors and a lot of museums and galleries are displaying my work, and it's a real, it's a real treasure, because the ocean is what's the most important part. But, uh, you know, when you've been under the ocean, there's so many colors, uh, I mean, and sometimes some would say with a black and white picture, you may not capture that variety or the spectrum of colors that you see from the coral life and marine life. I, I, I don't see the ocean that way. Yeah. I, don't, I don't photograph things that are really colorful, if you'll notice on my work. Most of the things that I photograph are in shades of gray, and uh, if you look at the, uh, the California sea lions, Right. Uh, they're gray, and uh, the ocean basically is a light blue, which turns gray and black and white. Okay, so when talking about the sea lions, I mean, again, when you go photograph an image like that, what are you hoping to capture? What do you want people to see from the image? I, I preconceive uh, the image, much like Ansel Adams. And um, uh, I spend two to three hours on, in, you know, on, the, on the seabed in one place without even moving, waiting for the right light to happen or the right subject. And that's tough because you also I'm not a normal diver. <laughs> I don't swim a lot. You go in the water and you sit in the spot and you wait. <laughs> that's right. And you only take uh, what we discovered. Uh, generally, take about twelve shots or less per dive. So there, yeah, that's you know my camera holds only twelve images. And uh, the first exposure, I, I click that off to make sure everything's working. And you always save one for the last, right? In case the ultimate. Okay. Comes your way. And it's been my life, and it's proven to work. Well, I guess because in this day and age with uh, digital technology, we're a bit of a spot. We kind of snap first and choose later. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> well, it's good. You know, it really, it really is because the whole world can enjoy the visual arts with the digital technology. And, and that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. Well, we want to show an image of, of a, a certain sea lion that uh, we're just going to put up on screen right now. Maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Her name is Spot. I met Spot uh, many, many years ago uh, off Anacapa Island, the Channel Islands off Santa Barbara, California. And uh, Spot not only stole my snorkel when I photographed her, I was just uh, snorkel diving. Uh, she came up and uh, stole my snorkel, and later on through my life, she stole my heart, too. Okay. And every time I go back, uh, she has little ones. And the little ones come up to me and embrace me, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling. How many years have you uh, spent developing this relationship? Probably just a little lady here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess you had no intention of that? When you first went there, it was just some, uh, someone to photograph? Well, the light was coming down to the kelp, and it was just it was just striking her face like my, my grandmother's portraiture. Right. And that was my, one of the first exposures I made. And as you see through my, through my work, through the, as the years went on by, she became more friendly to me. She would actually turn upside down and look into the dome of my, my camera. Right. You know, and see her reflection. And uh, she's, she's stolen my fins before and my snorkel. And uh, she bites on my buckles and all kinds of it. But she's a dear, 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 dear friend. But that relationship, I mean, again, uh, most of the time they move away, it, so it takes time and you, you... You'll see that with most oceanographers today and yeah. marine science people and photographers. There is a relationship with our marine mammals. And, uh, you know, they've lived there longer than we have on this planet. Right. And uh, as, as long as we don't force the issue, as long as we don't, we aren't forceful to them, they'll come to you. Right. And that's what you need to do. What is the biggest threat you think that's facing the oceans today? People. Pollution, uh, runoff, mm -hmm. uh, uh, waste, plastics. Uh, we seem to dump everything in, the, in our rivers, our waterfalls, our lakes, our oceans. And part of the reason I'm here with, with the ADEX is to, is to talk to the audience 
science about that because the divers, the divers see it every time they go right. diving. And then that, that's how to communicate to the public. And your, your sponsorship here really helps too. Right. I guess it's true. I mean, when you don't, you don't see, you don't spend time in the water, you, you, you just forget, out of sight, out of mind, as they say, right. but for the divers right. in the water. It's very true. Uh, but this is a, it's about almost changing habits and changing lifestyles, which is a, pretty much a tall order. Uh, well, and, and this ocean planet, this, this blue environment that we have is so precious and everything that's within it. And every country today is it's attempting to, to have to set up reserves and preserves and not and get away from overfishing and really protect what's there for tomorrow. For our, oh, for my grandchildren, my great grandkids and the ones that are kind of following your audience. All right. But that's the future. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? <laughs> I think I've done that. Um, my work's in a lot of museums today in the world, and uh, timeless, timeless photographs that uh, you can't put a date on, that, 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 that have a statement uh, that how precious this environment is. And that's the legacy that I'd like to leave. And ha has this uh, carried on to your family? I mean, are the next yeah. future generations yeah, who are the continuing part, the, uh... the hardest part about our world today, this 2013, my, my Great-grandchildren are okay. They're, they're kind of behind me. But my children went into other fields, right. you know, real estate and landscape design and what have you. And the grandchildren, they went into teaching and things like this. So they, it's the great-grandchildren that are that are six, seven, and eight years old today mm -hmm. that are kind of behind me, which is good. And, and I'm dragging them along. So we skip a generation. Well, at least you, you well, didn't miss it all together. So, I mean, I'm sure they'll carry on the, the uh, tradition as well. And uh, just very quickly, we we'll talk about this, uh, this book. You are mentioning that there is a, a museum uh, coming up as well that is going to showcase some of your work. Oh, yes. Uh, I have an exhibit with Ansel Adams that begins the 20th of May this year. It's in Newport, Newport News. It's in Virginia, one of the largest uh, museums in the United States. And uh, it's a collector's museum. Right. So it has about 70 of my images, very, very large. Mm -hmm. And they're there for the general public to really enjoy. OK, you got a favorite image till today? That's oh, right. sure, sure, Spot. Spot. Yeah, it has to be. You know, Something's that close to you, yeah. and people who photograph, whether it's birds or dogs or cats or whatever, or their children, there, there's some, just something about that eye contact that works. Right. Well, Ernie, thanks so much for sharing Thank you. with us. Thank you very much. Award-winning photographer Ernie Brooks there on his passion for photography and the marine uh, conservation work that he has been dedicated to. And he's also the guest of honor at this year's Asia Dive Expo. It's happening in Singapore this weekend. He'll be speaking at one of the sessions. If you'd like to find out more about it, do take a look at the website. We've got it on screen right now. All the details are there. On the note, we're done. We're going to wrap it up for today. It is uh, Thursday, 18th of April, but we're back tomorrow. Bye, Nelly. It is a Friday after all, so do join us then. Have yourself a good day. Bye-bye.